is the 2019 Pac-12 champion. The 2020 Rose Bowl champion. champion. Richardson, another open three. Good. Duarte dribbles and slams with the right hand. For the third time in the last five years, the Ducks are Pac-12 champions. Season champions and now Pac-12 tournament champions. Welcome to Duck Insider. We're just getting started. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. Live from the Country Financial Studio, here's Joey Mack. Thank you, and it's going to be a fun show today. Uh, we're going to take a look inside the NBA bubble. That's going to be a fun time. More on that coming up in just a little while. Uh, some of your Facebook comments and questions, YouTube as well. Uh, if you're tuning in on Twitter or Periscope, thanks for joining us. I'm Joey Mack inside the Country Financial Studio. Uh, Quentin Moore is going to join us. Uh, some of you may remember that name. Quentin was an intern in 2015. 15, the years run together. I think it was 2015. Uh, he actually also has directed the show in the past. Um, we, we usually, if, if when Scott and I, yeah, when Scott and I aren't the only ones, you know, pretty much in the building, uh, we usually have people rotate through. And this is actually, the show is one way that we teach interns how to run cameras and run audio and broadcast, do shows, all that good stuff. You know, like we, we actually love our interns. Like I... It's been a month. It's September 1st since we went back on the air, and I still have my intern whiteboard over here to my right, um, and it, it's, it actually says, interns, please come back. I used to have like all these bullet points of all the different things that the interns would work on, and it was great having the village of interns around. That's what I've always said is, you know, it takes village. That's been one of my phrases since, shoot, I don't even know when I started saying that. been a long wow. time now. But Quentin was, oh, there it is. Scott's showing it. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that's important. Thanks, interns. Um, and so Quentin was an intern, has since uh, moved on to become a great camera operator. He's actually in the NBA bubble. So Quentin is going to talk to us about what it's like in the NBA bubble, uh, the broadcast production. The Los Angeles Times had a great story about what the broadcast production has been like and, and how they've pulled it off in the NBA bubble. It's really something Quentin's going to kind of Pull the curtain back for us. We're also going to talk about some of the products that he's interacted with in the bubble. We'll do that for you coming up. And if anybody has questions, I'll do my best to answer them. We actually talked to Quentin a little bit earlier today with his schedule because he's working games here coming up tonight. Uh, and so Quentin, we, we talked a lot, though, after the interview even ended just to catch up with him. And I'll be able to answer some of those questions for you for those of you who are wondering. Also, though, we have to start with maybe the coolest addition that we've ever had to the Duck Insider desk. Look at this U.S. Open ball that Nils Shelander gave us. So I'm going to pick it up. I asked him if I was allowed to touch it, and he said yes. Oh, well, i got to keep it in camera. Roger Federer, John McEnroe, and Rafael Nadal all signed that ball. And I asked Coach Shelander, like, <laughs> are you sure about this? Like, that's that. that that's probably the most valuable thing that's in this room, and we have a lot of stuff in here. Pretty special. Um, so, yeah, this is really cool. Um, so we now have the tennis ball on the desk with those three signatures. So really three of the greatest athletes, not just tennis players, but athletes of all time. Uh, and the U.S. Open, of course, is, is underway. Um, Pretty sweet. Thanks to Coach Shelander. He... It was really cool. Uh, yeah, he, he, he gave it to us to put on the desk. So front and center. From from Neil Shelander. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Uh, also, how about Ruthie last night? Ruthie Hebert, 12 points, 11 rebounds. First double-double of her WNBA career. She got the start for the Chicago Sky, and I loved Rob Mosley's tweet about it. He was like, hey, when when Ruthie starts, the average margin of victory is still like 25 points. And so he, he joked, you know, I'm not saying that she's in the running for the MVP, but I'm not not saying it either. <laughs> uh, well done by Rob Mosley at Godux Mosley on Twitter and Ruthie Hebert. Uh, that's pretty cool, too, because – Remember, she's playing with another Kelly Graves product in Gonzaga great Courtney Vandersloot, who broke the WNBA single-game assist record last night. She had 18 assists. Uh, that's pretty special. So Kelly Graves was pretty darn happy about that. Speaking of Rob Mosley, uh, today on GoDucks.com, cross-country, cross country, yeah, 
That was a that was not easy for me to say. Thank you, Scott. Cross country worked out at the new Hayward Field yesterday. Um, one of a few positive things that are still going on. Hayward Field, right? We can all rejoice about Hayward Field. Uh, there will be a reveal ceremony though f- when the rest of the team is back. So the curtain is still kind of pulled close on on all of Hayward Field. But Cooper Tier is among them who worked out. Robert a great piece about about Cooper and just talking about how he was doing so well and then literally they're warming up for the indoor national championships when it's called off. Right? I mean that 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 was what happened. That was kind of the the where were you when that when this all stopped and sports just stopped, right? That's where indoor track and field was. And so it was just a really cool look at, you know, hey, this stinks right now. The shutdown sucks, but there are bright days ahead. And, and Hayward Field is a shining example of those bright days ahead. I encourage you to check it out on Godux.com from Rob Mosley today. Uh, I mentioned that we're going to also talk to a couple of other student athletes throughout this week. Mia Palmer from Oregon Soccer. I don't think we're going to have time to get to her interview on the show today, but we will this week. And this is going to be fun because we have part – three of the mini series with Keenan Wan, head coach, Oregon Acrobatics and Tumbling. They've been doing a Q&A on Instagram, on IGTV, on Instagram Live, if you will. And Keenan Wan talked with Cammie Wilson, incoming freshman on Instagram today. If you missed it, you can find it on the Oregon Acrobatics and Tumbling Instagram. I think it's just a great idea, getting to know the athletes. And this time it's an incoming freshman. And it was fascinating hearing from Cammie Wilson on, so what are you looking forward to about starting college? And similar to our conversation with Oregon soccer's Callan Harrington yesterday, it's like, man, how do, how do you how do you get ready for college right now? And and what's that like as a student athlete? Um, and Keenan Wan did a great job talking with her. So we're going to have that for you coming up a little bit later on today as well. And your products viewing guide for today has been updated because we've got uh, game seven between the Jazz and the Nuggets tonight at 5.30 on ABC. I'm stoked for this game. To my buddy, um, old friend of mine who's from Colorado, huge Nuggets fan, he was so stoked when Bull Bull went to the Nuggets. Um, For his own sake, I just hope that the Nuggets win. Otherwise, I might not be hearing from him tomorrow. Uh, Chris Boucher and the Raptors also are playing the Celtics this afternoon. If you're live with us in the 1 o'clock hour, you can tune in for that. And what else do we have on a Tuesday? I think that's about it, unless Scott Heineman... uh, get to start for the Rangers against the Astros. That might be it. And it is exciting to tell you that tomorrow, though, David Peterson is the projected starter against the Orioles, and he's back off the injured list for the New York Mets, which is well, – that's exciting. I mean, it, it sucked that right when Petey was hitting his stride pitching for the Mets that it was like, oh, well, injured. Um, also, the Athletes Unlimited uh, League continues. We'll tell you a little bit more about that coming up. All right, uh, before we get to a timeout, just to introduce – Quentin Moore again a little bit. So, intern of ours, has worked production at University of Oregon for a long time. Uh, and he'll, he'll tell you a little bit about just how he got started doing this and, and then also how he ended up being one of the guys that was invited to the NBA bubble operating the robotic cameras. Uh, it's really, really cool. We got a chance to catch up with him yesterday, and I want we talked to him for quite a long time. So I want to take a quick break. I'll catch up on some of your comments and questions, and then we're going to take you behind the curtain in the NBA bubble and what the broadcast production looks like. It's Duck Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack back inside the Country Financial Studio after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. After two years of construction, my wife and I finally moved into our dream home. So when a bathtub fixture broke, causing major water damage, I was glad we had the home insurance protection we needed. How do you know your home is protected? Talk to a country financial rep like me, Nick Simon. We can help you understand your options and select coverages to meet your needs. Then if something happens to your home, you won't have any surprises. Need the right coverage for your home but not sure where to start? Visit TakeSimpleSteps.com or contact a local country representative. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Don't go anywhere. Doc Insider continues after these messages on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Learfield IMG College. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager. Learning the lingo. Jelly. 
Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org, brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. I'm Little Teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, and here is my spell. No, Dad, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pull me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack inside the Country Financial Studio. All right, so Quentin Moore, a good friend of ours. Uh, he's a very, very good camera operator. Um, he really got his start as just a Godux video, quack video. We always say at quack video from Oregon Films, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Quentin Moore got his start here at Oregon. Still works production uh, for various broadcasts around the University of Oregon. But he's in the NBA bubble right now. Has been for a while. We talked about that and kind of pulled the curtain back on, on this – amazing endeavor of of pulling off a broadcast and what it looks like inside the bubble uh, he's a robotic camera operator he also runs the the rail cam if you will and he i, I should point out uh he was not the one that had a rail cam crash into Luka Doncic, so don't ask. That wasn't Quentin who was driving. Uh, but he does operate all of this stuff, and he's one of just a few people that's inside this production bubble. We called him a pro duck. I think he's a pro duck. I mean, he's he's a professional videographer inside the NBA bubble. And so, I, yeah, it's a little different. We know that it's a little different on Duck Insider today. We'll get to, you know, current student athlete, everything that's going on here in a little while, but... It's a fascinating conversation for us to catch up with an old buddy who's inside the NBA bubble, Quentin Moore. All right, Quentin, let's start with this. Uh, you just heard on the show I was introducing Quentin, telling you all the fun things about him. Uh, Quentin has already told his two-minute life story because many of you may remember that Quentin – sat in Scott's chair a few times. Uh, Quentin worked at Oregon, uh, still continues to work as a freelancer with Oregon at times. So, Quentin, I, let, let's start with this as I kind of gave your introduction. But now I, I want you to give a little bit of the background on, on how you got started. You're in the NBA bubble doing all this different video work. Uh, I will call you an ace camera op. Like I said, you've directed the show, all-around production guru, and you're in the bubble now for the NBA. Uh, just give us a give us a sense of, of, of how you got to, to where you are now. I don't know about ace. I'd say, <laughs> like, C's get degrees. So, <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, came to Oregon in 2015, started out uh, – from a small town, wasn't too set on what I was going to do with my life, went to community college, started writing, that led to journalism, eventually transferred to U of O, went to the School of journal Journalism, kind of moved away from the writing, got more into video, hmm. got the internship with Scott LeBounty, uh, Quack Video, and then I uh, did one year as an intern my senior year and had a blast just Say it, said yes to every opportunity he gave me. Uh, and then from there, the next year, we uh, got the robo equipment mm -hmm. shipped to us, leased to us. And I I can't say enough thanks to Scott and Aaron Jester and Zach Blaine for introducing me into that, putting or selecting me to be the operator and getting me all that experience. We did basketball, we did football, we did softball. And since then, I've worked basketball and softball on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, went to L.A. for the Super Regionals and Regionals for UCLA the year they won the national championship. I traveled to Kansas City and did the Big 12 championship tournament. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but that also led to this year going to the Big 12 championship, and that's when all the – COVID shutdowns happened mm -hmm. and that was, that was a weird feeling yeah. being in a room with everybody who's, 
been in the industry for years and years and then all of a sudden there's no more work yep yeah i uh i was right there with you my uh my my best COVID stoppage story is right after pregame film session with Oregon men's basketball. They had just finished the scouting report, and I'm not kidding you. Coach Altman brings everybody together in a hotel suite in Las Vegas right after film and says, all right, there's not going to be any fans. We know it's going to be weird. It's going to be all about us. Here we go. And right before they break, director of men's basketball operations, Josh Jameson, opens the door and says, yeah, we're off. And it was like, so then suddenly, you know, Coach Altman brings everybody back together. It's like, well, all right, fellas, we'll we'll let you know what, what we're going to do. Like, I, I mean, it, seriously, Quentin, I mean, I, I feel like this is going to be, at least for, especially for those of us who are in in the sports landscape, like that's going to be a moment that we're going to remember all a long time, right? Like, I mean, I, I mean, you were you said you were in the room with a bunch of people that have been in the industry a long time, Quentin. I mean, I've talked to a lot of those people, too. There's never been anything like this before. I mean, and that, that, that you had to feel that in that room, didn't you? Right. And, uh, like I was in a camera meeting about two hours before the game, pretty standard, uh, directors talking to us about what shots we need to fetch, who the Mm -hmm. heroes are on each team. Uh, and this guy with the clipboard and the tie comes in, kind of whispers into the ear of the director and he goes, all right, all the commissioners are on a conference call right now talking about what's going to to happen because we had known 250 fans per side right. because the night before was when the jazz and thunder game mm-hmm. had the positive test with gobert and that led to the nba uh stopping came into work the next day 15 minutes to tip all the players leave the floor and we here in the headsets we're now filming for news because we're doing sports center Jeez. hits and we we struck all the equipment that night. It was it was weird. And got out of there. Yeah. It's uh yeah. there's a lot of those stories around and I'm sure a lot of fans tuning in are are curious about it. I want to back up a little bit Quentin for for those that are unfamiliar cuz we we used a lot of uh shall we say jargon in our industry there. Uh words like fetching shots. I think people got what that means. Um you, you mentioned heroes. I want to I want to break down some of the jargon. Hero shots. Uh, talk about that a little bit, Quinn, just to give people a, a, an eyes view into the industry. And then also, you mentioned the robo equipment. What exactly is a robo camera? Because I think people get a kick out of this. Right. So, uh, hero shots. That's like uh, your main storylines as you go through a game, and it's similar in radio. You come in kind of with a script of like, this is the background going in. Mm-hmm. This, these are the main players that will likely carry their team to a win or be central in assisting the team to a win right and in terms of like getting a hero shot that's like after a player scores a basket you push into them with your camera director makes the cut there's your hero shot so in terms of what the robo cam is that's evolved for me coming down here to the bubble because we have between the three venues we started with and practice courts, we had 150 robo cameras. Holy That's cow. pretty overwhelming. That's a Especially lot of coming from a typical uh, like travel in set up a ATR, which is above the rim. That's the camera that's on top of the uh, shot clock, shoots down into the basket. And now we have. Behind the glass, we've got below the rim, which is on the stanchion and shoots almost like a handheld. And we've also got booth cameras. We've got cameras all throughout the hallways, which for like a bigger uh, event like the NBA Finals, we'll have those hallway cams just set up, shooting around, getting all the players behind the scenes. And then we've also got them in the practice courts to kind of document uh, what teams are in there to kind of give the networks more shots going into the games. And it's, Oh, it's a lot. Yeah. (laughs) Because we've got, we've got all those cameras and not enough operators. So there's some guys who are sitting there with three different control consoles waiting for their shots. It's, it's incredible. So, you know, the Los Angeles Times wrote a, wrote a great piece uh, that kind of gets into the nitty-gritty of what Quentin's talking about. If those of you who are interested, I really encourage you to check it out. It gives a great inside look into just the amount 
of work that went into to putting on these, these broadcasts. And Quentin's just one of a few guys that are that are there doing all this. That's why we wanted to talk to him. Uh, we called him a pro duck heading into the segment. You are a pro duck now. I mean, you were an intern w w with me. You were an intern with me and Scott. And then look at you now. I mean, this is, no, you're a pro duck. All right. So ace camera operator. There's very. I just want to say, and Quentin will never say this because he's too humble. And not too humble. You just are a humble man, which is a good thing. Uh, but I'll say it. There's not very many people that can run a camera like Quentin can. Um, this is a specialized skill, which is part of why he's there. Big reason why he's there. Uh, Quentin Moore joining us. All right, Quentin. So I, I want to take fans kind of just to give us a peek inside how this type of a broadcast and this pr level of a production that you guys are putting on is different from what we're all used to with a traditional setup. And you touched on it a little bit with... And so fans know part of the reason that all of these robotic cameras are used, the robos as Quentin referred to, is because then you don't have to have camera operators, right, Quentin, on the floor. It, it keeps the social distancing. That's kind of where, that, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Quentin, that's kind of part of the genesis of this. So how is it different? It's that, I mean, but there's a lot of differences between what we would call a quote-unquote traditional broadcast and now what you guys are, are pulling off in the bubble on a nightly basis. Right, and... Uh, the LA Times article you brought up, I did read that, and the term Olympic level was definitely thrown around because mm -hmm. the multiple venues and all the operators that are there, everyone coming together to produce this incredible feat between two networks with the NBA working together. It's, it's on a level that I couldn't fathom before coming here. And uh, where it isn't traditional is definitely like – limiting the level of exposure between the players and the people working there because we've got like no fans around they've got longer running lanes to get around uh all the operators for the robos are on the concourse mm -hmm. separated between uh like uh cloth uh barriers yeah. and yeah and uh it's the most plexiglass i've seen other than maybe a <laughs> hockey arena yeah <laughs> It's a lot, and uh, we do have some guys who have that level of access that are down on the floor with handhelds, but they're very far distance. Everyone has masks on. It doesn't matter where you are. Like, I leave my hotel room. It's phone, yeah. keys, wallet, mask. Yep. It's funny how you say that because I, I've kind of gotten to that way too, where I used to always be like phone, wallet, keys. Now it's now it's phone, wallet, keys, mask. Like that's that's actually really interesting. You're the first person that I've that I've heard say it exactly how I say it in my mind. That's really funny. I, I honestly, when we were talking about that earlier today, and we'll continue with more with Quentin Moore coming up in just a little while. That's a tongue twister. More with Quentin Moore. I wonder how many times he's heard that in his life. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it really has become, like, I always used to say phone, wallet, keys. Now it is phone, wallet, keys, mask. You know, it's it, it's crazy how, how those habits have already been developed. Anyway, uh, really interesting for us in, in, in Scott and I's industry, you know, and in John back in the radio studio, too, I, th I think all of us have have had to solve problems and, and figure out things, just like in any industry, of, of how to produce a broadcast and just technical issues and different facilities, different venues have different challenges. And this is just monumental what they've done. And, and I thought it was really fun catching up with Quentin. We're going to talk more with him coming up uh, about some of the products that uh, he's interacted with and just what this Herculean effort has been like to have these broadcasts look this good in the NBA bubble. Uh, it's really something. So we're going to continue more with the pro duck in Quentin Moore. Uh, duck Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union back inside the Country Financial Studio after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Mountain Dew Zero Sugar presents an original that's now maybe even better. Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a delicious Mountain Dew Zero Sugar with the same refreshing taste as the original, but with zero sugar. And all the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't get Humpty to try a different Zero Sugar soda again. Mountain Dew Zero Sugar, as good as the original, maybe even better. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. 
So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Doc Insider, Doc Insider, Doc Insider continues after this timeout on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. It's important to buckle up your kids. I know. Sometimes car seats can be complicated. I know. And if your child's in the wrong seat and you get into a crash. I know. It could lead to a serious injury. I know. So you're 100% sure you have the right car seat for your child's age and size? I don't know. Don't think you know. Know you know. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Make sure you have the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Joy Mack, welcoming you back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union inside the Country Financial Studio. Today's show brought to you by Shadow Hills Country Club, your family resort just minutes from home. Call for a tour today. We continue talking with an old friend of ours, videographer Quentin Moore. He's in the NBA bubble, operating cameras as part of this whole new broadcast style, and he's taking us behind the curtain. We continue our conversation from earlier today with Quentin Moore. Quentin, uh, Quentin Moore joining us. Uh, all right, so you're in the bubble right now. You mentioned going out of your hotel room. You're in your hotel room right now. Can you give us a sense of just what life is like in the bubble? I mean, we, we've seen some of the players talk about it and, and some of the stories, but, I mean, Quinn, just g- give us the, the bird's-eye view of, of, of what life is like in this isolation bubble. It's it's weird because uh, it's also I, – I, when I first got here, the term summer camp was also being thrown around. <laughs> I yeah, I see we're that. Gonna, we're, a lot of us are here for a long time. Like, I got here – mid July and the finals don't end until mid October. And it's weird thinking we're just getting into September. I'm kind of hitting the middle ground right here, even though we're through all the scrimmages, we're through all the seeding games, just getting into the real meat of the NBA playoffs. I still have a while to go. Mm -hmm. And it felt like a lot of the like main work in terms of like the number of games was in those seating rounds because there were some days where I was working two games a day. I was working three games a day sometimes. And yeah, being in the bubbles weird because I leave the hotel, have my mask on temperature check. I get my COVID test and uh, we haven't had any problems with that in terms of exposure. Great. And then uh, some guys like we'll get to, the arena and we're in this compound that has three different venues in it. And we've got like a catering tent. That's where usually we get most of our meals for the day. And then we work an NBA basketball game. And it's (laughs) like, we get to work and it kind of feels samey, but we uh, usually would do our camera meetings uh, in person. We don't do that anymore. It's all on headset and, keep the mask on and like we have those over the muff or over the ear muff headsets mm-hmm. with the mask on. So you already kind of feel like a fighter pilot with yeah. it on, <laughs> yeah. but then you put the mask on and it really gets you immersed in it. And like, I, like the way that they've provided the experience of the NBA games, it's eerily close to how it is. Like you don't feel the energy and the building of all the fans that Mm. you're used to when you get there. But on TV, I think it's pretty close to being replicated because they do have some fan noise in it. The led boards are so great with like the branding that they put on there, the virtual fans. It's, it's incredible to see in person. Yeah. I can imagine it's quite the it's quite the production. Uh, Quentin actually sent me a couple numbers that I, I want to read, Quentin from from the notes because this puts in perspective just 
how much is going into this. So Quentin said, and confirm this for me, Quentin, you did 59 games in 34 days and two days off? Yeah. Those two days off were the games that were the play-in game for the Trailblazers and Grizzlies, which I hated to cheer against Dylan, but glad that (laughs) the Blazers pulled it out. Yeah, I know. I do want to talk about some of the products because we still have some products. I know Quentin's been – Quentin's kind of keeping an eye on the products, actually, and we've been talking about that a little bit. Um, So so you said that you have a spreadsheet and you did 11 scrimmages, 31 seeding games, and so far 17 playoff games. Um, yeah. and, and and you asked me to guess which teams that you've worked the most and the least. Quinn, I honestly have no idea. Like, I was thinking about that the last couple of days. I have no idea. So, yeah, I mean, Scott says Lakers. I don't – yeah, I have no idea, Quinn. So, who have you worked – which games have you worked the most? Uh, it's uh, surprisingly the Boston Celtics I've worked the most. Okay. Uh, I worked one of their seeding games, and for some reason, whatever court I was on for the – or I worked one scrimmage, and whatever court they were on for their seeding games, it seemed like they were always there. Huh. And then the playoff games, I did three of their games against the 76ers, and then uh, did their first game against the Raptors two days ago, and then – the game today is Celtics Raptors, so all right. <laughs> seem to just keep following them around. All right, so Celtics it is. So Quentin, you know, if, if the Celtics are playing, chances are Quentin's probably running one of those cameras or like three of those cameras. Are there any teams that you have not seen or like like through a camera lens that you haven't worked their games yet? All twenty-two teams, I did all of them. Wow. I, the one that I did only once was the Spurs. Okay. I only did one of their. Uh, uh, scrimmages mm-hmm. and somehow didn't run into them in seeding, and then they were eliminated from playoff contention for the first time in 20 years. Forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Quint Moore joining us uh, inside the NBA bubble, giving us a peek into the into the production, but also give us a peek into the products. I mean, I know you've kept track of Bull Bull. You mentioned it was hard to root against Dylan Brooks. I, I think a lot of Duck fans are in the same boat as you, who are also Blazer fans. Troy Brown Jr., Chris Boucher. I mean, it, it, has it been cool to follow some of the products uh, like yourself? <laughs> You're the product camera operator. They're the products with the basketball. Right, and it's been funny, like, talking to my coworkers and being like, oh, here comes Chris, and they're like, we don't know who that is <laughs> because he, he comes off of a very deep Raptors roster that he only gets in uh, very sparingly. He, I've done five Toronto games and maybe seen him play in three of them, but he's been like ev- every time he seems to get in, he gets a rebound or he yeah. uh, throws up a three, and I'm just like, yeah, this is what I'm used to seeing, and everyone's like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> and then and – then, Watching uh, Dylan, he's been playing, or when he was here, he was playing with his uh, Oregon Nikes on. I know. And I was looking at him like, I see them there. And everyone's like, ah, we don't know. <laughs> 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 that's the uh, that's the, connection. the only one who seems to be getting that like big traction was Bull. Yeah. But that's because it's Bull. It's Bull. And he has that unique, like way that he plays and the way that he can pass and shoot it was for such a big guy with such length and like he got all that media attention because of the way that they put up their lineup for the nuggets where it was like he was running the five mm-hmm. and he had Jokic at point guard yep and honestly you could flip those two and i i think they could have the same results yeah he's gonna be uh He's, he's fun to watch, man. I, I, I've i said this before. You know, he only played nine games for Oregon, so I only called nine games of, of Bull Bull, and in every one of those games he had a moment where I my jaw dropped mid-broadcast. Like, it was just like, what? <laughs> that's not that's not a thing. And then, of course, he did it. I mean, it's it's really pretty – it's been pretty amazing. Uh, Quentin Moore joining us inside the NBA bubble. Uh, you know, Quinn, I, I'm kind of curious. I think a lot of people listening to this are like, wow, I mean, there's, there's so much going on, and, and there really is so much behind the scenes. That's why we kind of wanted to spend some time today and talk about it because Quentin's inside the bubble gave us a unique opportunity to to kind of think about things from a different perspective here. You know, Quinn, what would you say to folks that, that, that are interested in getting into the industry? I mean, I – I always like to, to to have folks like yourself talk to our interns, talk to students that that are thinking about this kind of a field because we've talked about it, it is a lot of work, but you get a lot of cool opportunities as a result of it. And what, what advice would you give for somebody who's interested in this kind of stuff? Well, I touched on it a little earlier with uh, when I was an intern, 
I it was pretty much a year trial run in the industry. And that's what an internship should be. It should be giving you the amount of time to get into those opportunities and try, kind of show what you can do. And you got to make the most of that time because when I was working for Scott, started out as Zach Blaine's utility yeah. and with, when he was running handheld for men's basketball. And that's kind of where you start. And uh, you just keep working at it. You keep showing your worth. You got to show up early. I always say that uh, early is on time. On time is too late because you got to get in, show that you're accountable. Uh, I actually have a kind of bad story about uh, <laughs> that early on as an intern. I was still commuting from my home near Portland and uh, it was before school had started my senior year. So hadn't moved back down and I overslept my alarm for a noon call time. It woke up around 10 uh -oh. and uh, was supposed to be there for a game at noon. So I kind of woke up. My call time was 10. Get a call from Scott. And he's like, uh, are you coming in? Or And kind of like, yeah, I'll be there in two hours. <laughs> 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 so everyone's got a story like that though yeah i mean but I that think... was yeah that was early on kind of didn't want to put that foot forward going forward so i uh, just kept working at it he said hey how are you doing with running handheld and i was like never done it but i'll do it and good did it kind of was patient with myself kind of kept honing the skills honing and honing and honing and then Eventually, he's like, well, how are you with running bug? I was like, I've never ran bug before. Bug That's the is, score bug. Yes, yeah. the score bug. There you go. Good and work. Graphics and all that. So ran that, and he was like, how are you, how are you doing with uh, directing? I was like, I never directed in my life. He's like, give it a try. You've done great with everything else. And I give that credit to Scott with being patient with the – interns but you gotta show up you gotta, gotta put in the hours you gotta say yes to everything because you don't know if you're good at something until you try it so and then after a year of doing just intern work come back as a temp the next year and he gives me he's like hey you want to run the robo i was like never ran the robo let's see how see where it goes full circle yeah, that's pretty cool. That that's great advice. I think Quentin, that's that that's awesome. And this has been so much fun for me just to talk with you about your career. I think that it's it, it's a cool thing that people get a kick out of. And you know, this is kind of inside baseball for the three of us, obviously, because this is what we do for a living. Like telling these stories is kind of fun. But I, I think you know, I get questions from fans sometimes, and and sometimes I explain it to friends of mine, even like how stuff works, and they're like, whoa. I didn't know, you know, I think it's, it's interesting just to talk with you about it, Quinn. I think you're a great example of, of somebody that, that found something they're really good at, and it's awesome to see. And especially because in the NBA bubble, there's just not a lot of people that are going to be able to say, hey, I was in the bubble. Quentin, you're one of those people, and you earned it. That's great. Um, this has been so much fun catching up, Quentin. Thanks for the time. Good luck the rest of the way out there, and uh, keep doing great work, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And can't forget where I came from, got my Oregon – shirt on nice I, <laughs> yes i brought my i brought my oregon credentials so <laughs> oh i have them hanging up in my room usually just to kind of remind myself where i came from and can't couldn't have gotten here without scott you guys i like there's too many people you even mentioned so that's awesome i love that the oregon films shirt is this is so perfect uh that's great quentin uh stay safe out there looking forward to catching up with you for a beverage sooner than later huh Absolutely. Thanks, you guys. That was fun talking with Quentin Moore. Uh, pretty great to catch up with him. Uh, it, it's great to see guys like that, friends of ours that we've worked with, that uh, end up in a great spot like that. And it was pretty cool just talking about the production. Uh, those of you who are ever interested in getting into that kind of stuff, I think a lot of people would be. And he's done a really good job. So thanks again to Quentin Moore for taking the time out of his busy schedule and joining us. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about acrobatics and tumbling. The latest question and answer with an incoming freshman. We'll do that next on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union, back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. As my family continued to grow, I realized I'd have to replace my beloved Jeep with something that has, well, more seats. 
I'm Jason Hines, country financial rep and father of seven. Whether you're upgrading from your sporty ride with no room for a car seat or finally replacing your well-loved beater that still has a cassette player, you'll want the right protection for your new car. Work with a country financial rep like me and get the protection you need at a price you can afford. Learn more at takesimplesteps.com or contact a local country representative. Welcome back for another episode of ASMR with Alex. Today, we're exploring the delicious, refreshing sounds of Pepsi. Oh, spilled a little there, but don't worry. It's all under control. Now for the best part. Pepsi. That's what I like. Nailed it. My subscriber is going to love this one. Locally owned Bigfoot Beverages is proud to support the Oregon Ducks. Go Ducks. Drink Pepsi. Duck Insider, your home for the latest news on Oregon athletics. This is the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text. And for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Everybody buckle up. Mom, 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 mom. Buckle up. Let's go. Buckle up. Can we go to the store? Mom, buckle can we up. Get some ice cream? Mom, 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 mom. Everybody. Everybody, buckle up. A lot goes on in the car, but you're in control. So only move when you hear the click that says they're buckled in. Never give up until they buckle up. Learn more at safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joy Mack inside the Country Financial Studio. Earlier today on IGTV, head coach Keenan Wan of Oregon Acrobatics and Tumbling talked to an incoming freshman, Cami Wilson. She also gave the show a shout-out after she was on yesterday. Keenan made me and Scott feel feel great at 11 a.m. this morning when they did this. Uh, the question and answer the latest in their miniseries. Keenan Wan talking with incoming freshman, Cami Wilson. I am Keenan Wan, head coach of the Acrobatics and Tumbling program here at the University of Oregon. Before we get started with today's episode, I need to give a huge shout out to Joey Mack. He is our Oregon Duck Insider host. Joey Mack, if you're watching, today's episode is just for you. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out, he is our host of Duck Insider, like I said, on the Go Ducks Facebook page. He is the host that gives you the show all things Oregon Athletics. So if you have not checked it out, I definitely suggest you do. He's awesome. I was fortunate enough to be on the show yesterday. We had a lot of fun chatting about our NCAA emerging sports status um, and all things acro. So definitely check him out. Shout out to you, Joey Mack. We are so excited to have you guys back for week two of Q&A with the Ducks. So excited to have incoming freshman Cammie Wilson. Woo! Yay! <laughs> we did it. That is a win. Okay. We had a lot of people. I don't know if you saw Cammie hopping on from all over the country. We have from Hawaii all the way to New York oh, today. So I'm exciting. so excited. So I'm glad we got this figured out. We are going to hop right in. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and a little about your family. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Cami Wilson. I am going to be an incoming freshman at Oregon this year, and I'm super stoked about it. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, California, born and raised here. I've been here all my life. So this is going to be the first time I'm moving away from home. And yeah. That is so exciting. It's okay, Cami. I went from Hawaii to Oregon, fell in love with it, and look, I'm still here. Exactly. Hello, Yelena. I see you, girl. <laughs> so I know a lot of people probably know you of your background before getting into acro, but tell us a little bit about your athletic background before starting your journey at Oregon. Yes. So I've been a competitive cheerleader all my life, fell in love with it when I was like yay big. And I continued my cheer career at the California All-Stars Moed for the past four years. And there I was a flyer, a tumbler. I then became a base and we 
took the world championships in 2018. And from there, I learned what a great environment and what it means to be on a team. And I saw that at Oregon and decided to continue my cheer acrobatics tumbling career at Oregon. I love it. We have a lot of Smoed fans on here. So I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Hi, Smoes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you heard about the sport of acrobatics and tumbling. I actually heard about it from my mom. She was someone who always wanted to find a way to continue a career in college and to be known as someone who is an athlete on campus. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case for a lot of other schools. So she looked into it and found that acrobatics and tumbling was an up and coming sport. And she was like, Cammie, you should try it out. And at first I was hesitant because I was the cheerleader and I loved sideline and I loved the bows and this and that. But the second I tried it out and I went to one of the camps, I immediately fell in love with the environment and the stunts and the skills and just the way that acro and tumbling runs. So thanks, Yay, mom. We're so excited <laughs> to have you. So I know you haven't competed in a meet just yet, but you've been able to do it at camp a little bit and seen some meets in person. So what is your favorite event? For me, my favorite event is the team event. And that was just because there were so many different people on the floor and it wasn't necessarily that all of us were top tier or we were all doing the same exact skills, but every single person had their own place on the floor. And I just thought that it was great that we were all able to come together and work together to perform such a crazy routine. Fabulous. I love it. We're so excited. Team event, obviously, in acrobatics and tumbling is a little bit different, but we're so excited to get you on campus and get started this fall. Yes. So what are you most looking forward to being a student athlete here at Oregon? Oh, my gosh. I just think about all the opportunities that I'm going to get. And just when I went on my visit, I started to get a feel for it. I started to get a feel of like, oh my goodness, this is where I get to practice. This is where I have a place. This is where I get to train. The facilities are insane, guys. <laughs> when I say insane, there's no words to describe walking into the JQA and to tutoring and all of that. But mostly I'm excited to just be on a team. I think that having 40 other girls right there next to me and to help me along the way is just going to make my college experience so much better. And that's why I fell in love and chose Oregon. Yay. Well, that kind of, you answered my next question a little bit, but you were able to come on a recruiting visit when things were a little more normal in the world. But yes. what was your favorite thing on your recruiting visit that you took? Other than seeing where I was going to live the next four years, my favorite part was definitely getting to sit in on the team practice. Um, you can always get a vibe right off the bat when you're looking at a team. And just the Acro and Tumbling team has such a great vibe. Everyone was there to work hard still play a little bit, joking around and whatnot. But when it came down to it, everyone was working towards the same goal. And that was a huge thing for me. And I think it's so cool that so many different girls can come together and be a part of one big thing, whether we're coming from LA or Hawaii or across the state in New Jersey or coming from cheer or gymnastics, just seeing that everyone was doing the same thing with such different diversity. And uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It was it was a feeling of home and it felt like this was the place that everyone wanted to be. Yeah, no, it's definitely a work hard, play hard program we have. That's my motto as a coach as well. Mm -hmm. So we're super excited. Obviously, like you said, there's 42 to 45 athletes on a roster. So to have that family feel, especially when people are coming from far away from home is absolutely awesome. So exactly. kind of switching gears a little bit into the academic side of things. Um, I know you haven't started college yet, but what's your proposed major and dream career? Yes. So I got first year admittance into the College of Business. So I will be a business <laughs> major this fall, which I'm super stoked about. Um, I'm planning on doing something, hopefully in the sports marketing area, maybe in the entertainment. And eventually dream job, of course, is CEO of something with like, the corner office where everyone knows you as the big boss, but <laughs> dream big. <laughs> I love it, Cami. Dream big, 100%. So I know you talked about the athletic side, but on your visit, what was your favorite part of campus for athletics or academics, rather? Um, let's see. For academics, my favorite part was the JQA Center. It is a huge glass building, guys, that is solely for access for student athletes where we get to tutor and we get to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. And 
I'm really excited to just be able to sit down there and grind it out in the same way I get to grind it out in the weight room or the Knights Arena or at practice or running around the track. I think my favorite part academically was definitely the Jayco Center. I love it. That is my favorite building on campus. Obviously, like you said, it's a big glass box, kind of sticks out, but it's an amazing resource for student athletes. I think you'll spend a lot of time there. Yes. So, um, Again, kind of looking at Eugene and whatnot, you'll start to find your favorite restaurants, but what is your favorite food? Guys, I'm a huge foodie. <laughs> and I think one of my favorite foods right now is anything sushi and poke bowls, especially right now. I am obsessed with poke bowls. It's kind of bad how frequently I get them, but. <laughs> It's okay. That's good for you. I will share some of you some amazing sushi spots. That's for sure. Hands down my favorite. Growing yes. up in Hawaii, eating fish all the time. That's <laughs> so, me. Um, kind of again, looking at Oregon, there's all the greenery. I'm looking out my window right now mm -hmm. to trees and the amazing landscape. But what's some of your favorite things to do on your free time? I think one of my favorite things to do is obviously spend time with the people I love. And it's spending time with teammates and friends outside of acro and now cheer and everything and also just adventuring i love just not really knowing where we're going and i knew i was going to be able to do that at oregon like let's go take a hike let's go visit this waterfall today let's let's just go up and see the sunset today and that's just something that sometimes i don't get to do anywhere else but i know at oregon i'll be able to just be like hey kaylin kaylin's my roommate guys kaylin <laughs> let's go on a hike today like and everyone is so down for it and i'm really really excited to do that awesome there are tons of hikes waterfalls and kaylin's an oregonian so she'll yes. be able to show you all the spots yes <laughs> so kind of heading into our last couple questions this is usually a fan favorite but what is your pre-meet superstitions or rituals <laughs> people are gonna think i'm so weird for these okay <laughs> so part of my rituals is the certain meals i eat so no matter what time of the day the meets at i will always have oatmeal no matter what. And that is the only thing I will eat. I will always have oatmeal. It could be 4 p.m. and I'm walking in with a cup of oatmeal. So I will always make sure I have oatmeal. I wear the same socks. They're these ugly high socks, but I wear the same socks. And um, I also say a little prayer just to get back in it. But other than that, I just think of it as game day for sure. I'm not really nervous about it. I'm just staying in the moment. And right before we go on i will always be dancing and it's not good dancing either it is just like <laughs> shaking up like getting loose and staying in the moment but those are my rituals that's pretty cool incoming freshman cammy wilson talking with her head coach keenan juan uh, oregon acrobatics tumbling uh, every tuesday and thursday at 11 a.m on igtv instagram they're doing uh, these get to know Q and A's uh, that the coaches host. It, it, I think it's been great. That's why we've been running them on the show. Getting to know some of the student athletes and an inside look into their lives uh, during all this craziness that's going on in the world. Today's show brought to you by North Fork Public House, open for dine in and take out. NorthForkEugene.com. A few things to tell you about. Some announcements from the University of Oregon. Also, the latest on some products in the softball realm, and a cool look on what we're going to do on the show tomorrow. It's going to be a good one as we wrap up Duck Insider, presented by Point Community Credit Union, inside the Country Financial Studio. After this, on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. After two years of construction, my wife and I finally moved into our dream home. So when a bathtub fixture broke, causing major water damage, I was glad we had the home insurance protection we needed. How do you know your home is protected? Talk to a country financial rep like me, Nick Simon. We can help you understand your options and select coverages to meet your needs. Then if something happens to your home, you won't have any surprises. Need the right coverage for your home but not sure where to start? Visit TakeSimpleSteps.com or contact a local country representative. This is Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Most of my family, they never graduated high school, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter Brooklyn was also a motivation for me to go back to school. 
Every day after work, went straight to school, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. You took the first step and quit smoking. But even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joy Mack with you inside the Country Financial Studio. Thanks, Quentin Moore. Thanks, Keen Juan and Cammie Wilson for joining the show today. A busy day. And this is pretty cool from Athletics, or excuse me, Athletes Unlimited. I keep saying Athletics Unlimited, but it's Athletes Unlimited. It's an athlete-driven league. So the Pro Ducks, yeah. Janie Takeda Reed, 440 points, the scoreboard. For Athletes Unlimited, uh, tied for fifth overall amongst all players. Gwen Savekis, 410 points, was tied for 10th. DJ Sanders, 370 points, was tied for 13th. And remember, for those of you who have, have missed our conversation about this, Athletes Unlimited, there's a scoring system that's not only based on how your team does, and they redraft the teams every week as part of this league, there's also individual points that get awarded to athletes, and that determines your compensation at the end of all this. Pretty cool. I think it's a great idea. I got a kick out of watching the games, I'll be honest. I thought it was fun. It, it took me a little while to get used to the scoring system, and and honestly, I had to look it up a couple times. But when Gwen Zavekis hit a home run, it was like, okay, how many points is that? She had 40 points for a home run. That makes sense, right? You Four bases. Yeah. See? You get it. You figure it out eventually. Um, I thought it was cool. Also, if you missed it yesterday, uh, University of Oregon has announced a virtual town hall this week for students and families. More info on uoregon.edu. It's Thursday, September 3rd at 1 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, and each town hall will be focused on different things relating to restarting classes and what university life is going to look like. Uh, I want to keep mentioning that uh, Thursday, September 3rd at 1 o'clock. We'll see you on the show tomorrow. When you went car shopping, you meant business. You ace vehicle history searches and test drives. You out salesman to the salesman. Now you've got your wheels. If you manage that,